Hi, Dinah. Thank you so much for joining me here. Uh -huh. All about, yeah, hi. This is World Menopause Awareness Month, and we're here together talking about our passionate area, which is the perimenopause, menopause, postmenopause time for a woman. And Dan, I wanted to introduce you. We've worked now together for quite a number of years. And we got together, especially connecting with the Balance app, where we both contributed some expertise there. You with your amazing Pilates, me with my, my food and inspiration from that perspective on nutrition. And we got to know each other and really share this passion for improving the quality of a person's life in at this time. And I know you, you're absolutely, you're so passionate. You're, this qualified Pilates teacher, but you're so much more. Tell us a bit about your history, where you arrived at today, but also a little bit about what you do right now, if you don't mind. Emma, thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me to talk with you. I really appreciate it. And yes, absolutely. It's been a great joy to me to, to uh, hook up with you over the past couple of years, to chat, to work together, really really enjoyed that and you do have this tremendous passion which you glow with and I absolutely resonate with that and relate to that um, so yes I am a Pilates teacher I have been for 25 years um, I have other movement skills and training which have influenced my Pilates which include yoga and something called gyrotonic and a dance background but I think that in terms of the menopause and why that's been my passion is because in these past 25 years, the biggest demographic in terms of my client base has been menopausal women and trying to help them and to understand what was happening to them when there was so little information, particularly in the sphere of the physical body for movement in relation to menopause was a challenge at time because, because I couldn't necessarily join the dots. I'd be looking thinking, well, you know, I, I feel pretty certain that this issue is related to menopause, but nobody else is saying that. The physios aren't saying that, you know, for example, frozen shoulder or plantar fascia. Yeah. Sort of thing. The things I would see, and I got more and more interested and at times very frustrated because I, there wasn't any information for me, but I kept on, um, learning about it from my clients, observing. And then, of course, when I eventually got to my own perimenopause and I had the full on onslaught of hormonal depletion for myself and the impact that had on my body, that, again, impassioned me to learn more, understand more, educate myself more. And fortunately, by then, more information was coming out. And I just feel really, really passionate that Pilates as a method is very, very appropriate for women in this phase of life yeah because it can be modified so much but also partly because it covers so many of the bases that we need to focus on as our hormones are changing and depleting and it's a method which you can if you've never done any exercise it's a great place to start and if you've done lots of exercise it's a great place to build on so for me, it's been the, for me personally, it's been the best form of exercise in my own perimeni, perimenopause to postmenopausal journey, which was, you know, quite painful. And I had to learn a lot. Um, so okay. I think that is my own experience, the experience of teaching so many women, the realization of joining the dots and understanding more about mm. the landscape of menopause over the past five, six, seven years in particular, has just kept me really, um, well, I get very excited about the whole thing because I love it. And I know there's so many things that we can do to help ourselves and help our clients. Um, yes. I want to share that information really because so many women yes. are very desperate at this phase and I have seen it. And to be able to mm -hmm. say, actually, now I understand so much more, I can see what's happening, you know, we can work on this. Absolutely. That's exactly right. And talking about joining the dots, I know that you've done a lot of study, actually, in the last few years, not just specifically within the Pilates field, but I know you've looked beyond that and you've done some, uh, in fact, I know you did a course, a menopause, understanding the menopause course or um, confidence in the menopause course, which was, in fact, a course designed for uh, medical practitioners, but, but it was open to professional health professionals yes. of all walks. Yes. And I know you did that as well. 
and further joining the dots. And I know your network is with many doctors and nurses as well as other fitness professionals. So, so it, 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 and with me, who's a nutritionist. So, you know, it all, and sleep doctors. And yes, I know. And there's that, it's that whole view because it isn't just one thing that helps a woman. It's all of them. Something's helped more than others, as you are well aware. Uh, yeah. But it is understanding all those pieces of the jigsaw puzzle that really help a woman thrive yes. at that time, not just get through it, but yeah. actually begin to thrive and yeah. get better. And yeah, yeah. So I think probably because of the um, where I, you know, the work I've done in my studio in the Cotswolds, and now I'm doing more online, um, and the work I've done with other teachers, because I've trained teachers in menopause awareness. And I, as you know, I've written a book, which is being published next year. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> many of my clients have been really desperate. So a lot of the women I've worked with have had a lot of issues. And that's kind of where I've come from more very much a rehab aspect. But I know very much that, you know, we have to build all areas together. It's very much the holistic approach, which is why I love the fact that I get to work with you and I get to mm. connect with so many other health professionals because there is no one way or one thing. It, it's that multidisciplinary approach to self-care. And it's an incredible mm. opportunity to develop your self-care. I mean, yeah. that. That is the gift side of it. I know for many women, it is, you know, a very difficult time. For others, it's absolutely fine. But it is a gift of an opportunity to reassess and reevaluate, reevaluate what your nutrition is like, what your exercise is like, how your sleep is, how your stress is, all these elements which contribute to the balance we're seeking in our lives. Yes, absolutely. I know. But I know that you just alluded to the fact that some women are just quite crushed by that menopause time menopausal time and so for them to even from my perspective I know from my clinic work for them to be starting to think about well what can I change in my diet they're just not there they couldn't possibly and I, in fact I was speaking earlier with Dr Sarah Ball and she was talking about this and from her perspective you know the woman has perhaps a little bit of HRT and that begins to help uh, across all of her symptoms then she might have that energy or those that motivation to seek you out for some pilates work to seek me out to perhaps change things and gradually get better but sometimes a woman is just yeah. absolutely I so completely flattened yeah. yeah i think hrt if it's an option that you want to use and you can use it's it can be like a bridge i know it was a bridge yeah. It enabled me to then, re, you know, get going again, rather than constantly firefighting, I could actually address what I needed to address. And I think yes. it's the same for, for many women. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And the same for me as well, especially with my cognition and thinking clearly. Absolutely. Now, the reason I've actually got you here on um, online is because it's World Menopause Awareness Month. And the International Menopause Society have suggested we focus on cardiovascular health this year, which I think is such a perfect topic to focus on. And from my perspective, there's plenty a person can do it, it to do with food. And I'm going to be running in, in going through this in quite a lot of detail. And I'll have another um, YouTube video about entirely about this. But I wanted to ask from your perspective and with your experience, what what would you be suggesting or, or or talking to a a a client about when it comes to cardiovascular health in it's your very, work? A very good question because Pilates is viewed as the sort of um, mind body slow type of exercise which won't necessarily get your heart rate up, and we tend to think of exercise as always relating to the heart rate being raised and and needing that, which we do. We need to exercise the heart. It's a muscle, it needs to exercise. Um, but Pilates has got many benefits which are good for our heart. Um, in terms of strength exercise, because we now know that strength exercise is very important for building muscle, getting muscle tone. And we also know that in the postmenopause, we lose muscle tone. I mean, it's something I've seen a yeah. lot clients 
And I'm the nag bag. I'm the one there saying, I'm really happy you walk the dog, but it's not enough. You've yeah. got to do this exercise, which is going to increase your muscle mass, because if you've got more muscle mass, your whole system is going to work better. Your longevity is going to improve. And it, your, your muscle is, is an indicator of your health. Yeah. So, you know, and we need muscle so that we can, our metabolism can work properly so that we don't have risks of other things like heart disease and type two diabetes and so on. So building muscle through strength work is something we do in Pilates. Now, that being said, if I'm dealing with a, a lady who has, you know, she's exhausted, she doesn't know where to start. We're going to start really small and really gentle because it's about success. You want to succeed at what you do, because if you feel you can do it, then you'll start to build on it. And this is where I love the movement snacks and the movement bites because they're oh, yeah. in your day. And that's the other thing I think. We tend to have this notion that exercise means I go to the gym for an hour or I go for a run or I go for a walk. Walking is great. Don't get me wrong. Swimming is great. Yeah. If you can do it all great. And particularly for cardiovascular health, really, really good. But lots of women find that they just can't do it or they've got an injury which is stopping them from do it, or doing it, or they're too tired to do it, or they're too anxious to do it, you know, whatever the reason might be. And I, and I understand that. I mean, you know, I can't run, but I need to work on my cardiovascular health. So I can do that in the strength work that I'm doing, because not only is it building my muscle, but it's going to increase my heart rate. Yeah. Now, we, could, we could try that right now, if you'd like. Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yes, move my laptop please. So that okay. I, because I'm sitting on a high stool and that's not going to work for what I need. So if you're okay. sitting on a chair, this is ideal for any chair that you're sitting on. Let's see if you can actually see me on this. I'm not, oh, where am I going to put it? Hang on. <laughs> it's okay. Absolutely. Get yourself. This is really good for people to see. So you please take your time to get organized. And um, so I know so that we can see the kind of the screen with your whole chair and your body, that would probably be the best. Great. Right. So there I here, here I am. I'm on the sofa, actually. So here I am on the yep. sofa. Take that off because that's a little bit airy fairy. So yes, a chair in your office. This could be, you know, a chair at the kitchen table, the sofa. Simple things like I'm going to press out with the sides of my legs, imagining I've got a band around my legs or I put my hands there and I do a sit to stand. So I'm oh, wow. yeah. and I'm sitting down. Now, if I do 10 of those, and if I hover and hold, my heart rate is going to go up. Yes. That's the simplest of snacks, which is going to build strength and it's going to raise my heart rate. And it's also going to mean my hip joints have moved, my knees have moved, I'm changing my focus. And we know that movement is great for thinking, for our cognition. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then you could sh shift your feet. So at the moment, I've got my feet next to each other in line. I could have one forwards and one back. And that oh, okay. challenges my balance as well. But again, if you did 10, 15 of those twice a day, three times a day, you're going to increase your heart rate. Yes. You're going to build muscle. Oh, my gosh, yes. So, yes. And, and, you know, they're really simple things which we can implement, but they impact our day. They also mean if we did them regularly, we start to get stronger and stronger. Yeah. That means we can start to do more and more. Yes, yes. That's perfect, literally. That is just very doable. And I could imagine that for some people that's really quite hard initially. Yes. And so that's a great to work up to. I'm actually going to go away after this. I'm going to practice that and see how many I can get to, you know, and see whether I even get to 15, because that's interesting as well. That whole sit to stand thing is, as I understand, as you get older, I mean, quite, quite you Very know. Very functional movement. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And, and so yeah. vitally important to maintain. Yeah. We all want to be able to get up and off the loo by ourselves unaided and out of a chair. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, you can make this, if if a normal sofa is too low to start with, put some cushions on it so you don't go down so far. If it's too easy, 
go lower, use a stool. I've been using a stool on Instagram a lot. It's just one of those kitchen steps. So you go lower, you have to work harder, pause, right. hover, hold, pulse the legs. You, you can add lots of things in. So they're right. very simple, very accessible. You don't need anything special and they're going to make a difference to your heart health, to your bone health, yeah. health you know. Yeah, amazing. Everything, yeah. It's amazing. Thank you. Because I know on Instagram, um, you have the most fabulous, what you call exercise snacks, really doable, very clear. Thank you. You know, and this is what you show people. These are the snacks you can do during the day. And I love them because some of them are really quite challenging for me. And I go away and I just practice them and I find some of my favourites. And uh, and I love it because it is so clear. Thank you for that. That's really good, that one. Yeah. It's amazing. Quite, it's just, I mean, I, I think that actually the great thing about social media is it's a really great way of having an educational resource. So to me as a teacher, and I love teaching, it's like, wow, I've like I've got a whole new area to play with and to get information out there. But you know, I know these things come up and disappear on people's feeds. So whether they see them or not is a lot of the time down to the good old algorithm. But um, it's all there. <laughs> yes, yes. Menopause Pilates on Instagram. It's very easy for people to search for you. But I'll also add that into the notes. Definitely. So apart from the, the snacks, which are, in, are fantastic, and they do help, as well as obviously building your muscle mass, they do help your cardiovascular system generally. Is there anything else it, like if someone was actually coming to you in a class situation rather than a snack, is there anything you concentrate on? Do you actually try and see if you can elevate the heart rate at some point during a, a Pilates session or what's, yeah. how do you do that? But again, it depends why they've, they've come. If they've come because they want to de-stress and they want to reduce stress levels in the body and of course heart health benefits yeah. get stress reduced as well, then we're going to yes. do arming session which won't necessarily have any you know increasing the heart rate type movements but in the studio in the pilates studio we've got these big beds called reformers and we have these fantastic things called jump boards so you're lying down and you can jump so you right. can i i get my clients i get them to get their heart rate up i get them to get to feel their muscles because and it's quite i mean bless them they're so good sometimes they come back to me and they say i really felt that last week and it showed me that i haven't been doing what i should be doing and right. i could find it with my clients who are hypermobile so that's where the muscle tissue has less receptors and people tend to overwork the ligaments and if you think we lose muscle tone in menopause and for me personally, mm. I lost a lot of feedback until I started on HRT, particularly testosterone. That has helped my feedback and my strength in my body. But if you're not doing any of these, then you've got, you really have to work. And if you're hypermobile, you have to work hard anyway to keep the muscles awake using resistance, which is a great way to, you know, using Pilates works very well for that. But if you're then losing your hormones as well and losing more muscle mass and more feedback, then you have to work doubly hard. So yeah. it, it's difficult at times. And I know it's challenging. And I, you know, sometimes I think I'm just a nag bag because I say, well, you know, <laughs> I'm, but they, 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 they get it. They understand and they come because they want to be reminded. So we can do things to increase heart rate. We do things which are challenging in the studio environment with the springs to increase the weight. But also I do Zoom sessions and I'm just setting up a platform which will have lots of different um, exercise, snacks, short sequences, right. different types of movements to help different conditions within menopause and, and so forth. And the yeah. map can be equally as challenging. For me, it's yeah. accessible. So I, to me, it's always important and it always has been in my teaching to make the movements accessible because if I demonstrate something which is so hard, how, how you know, and I'm finding it hard, then it's just not fair. We want people, right. to, I want people to achieve and feel successful in their movement and know they can do it. So for me, um, using stretchy bands, using weights, these are great within Pilates practice and breaking movements down to make them accessible, to get the strength in there, to get the heart rate up is completely possible in my view. Yeah. 
Yeah, there you go. Fantastic. And that's great. I didn't realize that you were recording some videos to have on a platform for people to kind of absolutely be doing this in their in the home. That is fantastic, actually. Great. Good. Oh, you must tell me when that's ready to be released and I'll mention it um, to everybody. So that's really, really good. That's that's so helpful, Dinah. I know I I mean, in my clinic work, some people come and see me and they might have high cholesterol. Yeah. And they come and they see me, and before they go on a drug, they the, the the GP says has said to them, "Okay, if you want to take three months and see if you can bring it down." And they come and they see me, and in fact, through what they eat, we can bring that down. But I can't be. I would suggest to them, of course, to do exercise and especially muscle building exercise. Yeah. But I can't make them do it. So people like you, who are really great, passionate motivators. It works so well. It, it works really well to um, to do that, uh, to have those people doing that. I, yeah. It's great actually to have that connection because I do have, you know, quite and have had over the years a number of, of my clients who've said, yeah, my doctor wants to put me on statins, but I'm going to yeah. try my diet first. And yeah. you know, they're very stressed. We want to try and lower the cortisol levels because that can... Right. Be- as well but knowing that you know we have, there's somebody like you who understands how to work with nutrition is a great thing to be able to refer people to and yeah. it's I think when you've got so many things that you're trying to juggle at this phase in life keeping it simple is really yeah. simple building blocks you've also yeah. got to enjoy it that's the other thing you know it's got to make you happy because if you're happy oh heart is happy then you'll do it yes yes what's the point (laughs) yes absolutely yeah that's right I know I love that and with your exercise snacks you've always got a smile on your face and and kind of you know sometimes you're even a little bit cheeky with it and it's great and you just get get on with it and come on you can do this you can do this girls you know it's great so well done it's a real motivator and I like that a lot Dinah thank you yeah that's fantastic well I think that if someone watching this if they go to your social media or and your website i don't know whether you it's how soon your uh, online work will be released but uh, they'll, yeah. <laughs> yeah good okay good all right that's amazing and then they can get the motivation i think they're going to need and that's really good brilliant okay thank you thank you so much for showing me that just that sit sit, sit to stand it's such a simple one and yet it's so effective and it's perfect it's exactly what um, everyone can take away from this <laughs> exactly yeah brilliant thank you emma so much for inviting me i really appreciated it okay pleasure all right brilliant brilliant thanks diana thank you